Who doesn't remember Bewitched? Bewitched was an American television sitcom fantasy series about a beautiful witch named Samantha, played by Elizabeth Montgomery, who meets and marries a mortal named Darren Stevens, played by Dick York from 1964 to 69, and Dick Sargent from 1969 to 72. Darren is a New York ad executive, and he's completely shocked to discover that his bride is a witch, and he just forbids her from using this magic. While Samantha really tries to comply with Darren's wishes and lead the life of a typical suburban housewife, her magical family, led by her mother and Dora, played by Agnes Moorhead, and her father Maurice, played by Maurice Evans, disapproves of the mixed marriage and frequently interferes with the couple's lives. The annex of the show often center around Darren with his tendency to get into trouble with his boss, Larry Tate, played by David White. As the show progresses, Samantha and Darren welcome a new little witch into the family with the birth of their daughter, Tabitha, played by Aaron Murphy as well as the birth of their son, named Adam. The show's now-iconic animated opening credits were created by Hanna-Barbera. They were the creators of such beloved 1960 cartoons as The Flintstones, The Jetsons, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You?, and many others. Elizabeth Montgomery became pregnant during the show on three occasions during the show's run. Her first pregnancy, which occurred during the filming of episodes 2 through 7, wasn't used in part of the storyline and was covered up by filming most of the scenes not featuring her first and then filming her scenes after she gave birth soon before the season 1 premiere date. Her second and third pregnancies led to the births of Tabitha and Adam, their children. The show's theme song was composed by Jack Keller and had lyrics written by Howard Greenfield that were never used for the show. Several artists recorded versions of the song, including Steve Lawrence and Peggy Lee. In Season 4, Episode 21, entitled Hippie Hippie Hooray, we see Larry, played by David White, and Louise Tate, played by Casey Rogers, in their kitchen. It's the same set used as Tony Nelson's kitchen from I Dream of Jeannie in 1965. The Bewitched House can be seen down the street from Jeannie's house in many of the outdoor scenes, and that house doubles as the residence of fellow NASA co-worker Dr. Bellows. The house that was used by Sally Field in Gidget was located right next door to the Stevens house and was used in Season 1, Episode 25, called Pleasure O'Reilly, which featured a new neighbor by the same name moving in next door. The creator of the show, Saul Sachs, wrote in his memoirs that the reason that Elizabeth Montgomery and William Asher were hired is because the two of them were looking for a project to do together, and their agents sent them out as a team. The two initially wanted to do their own concept about a young woman who becomes an heiress, but they realized that the bewitched premise fit their ideas well enough and they signed on to the project. Now, Elizabeth Montgomery is the only cast member of the show to appear in every episode of the series. And of the 23 actors and actresses who appear in 10 or more episodes, only a handful of them are alive at the date of this recording. The last one that I can think of that passed away would be Bernard Fox, who played Dr. Bombay and he passed away in December of 2016. The rehearsals for the pilot of the show were set to begin November 22, 1963. However, they were postponed because of the assassination earlier that day of President Kennedy. John Kennedy was a good friend of William Asher from the show. Alice Ghostly originally did not appear as Esmeralda, but as a maid named Naomi, who caused havoc in Season 2, Episode 17, titled Made to Order. 
she was asked to help with a client dinner at the Tate's home because their own maid was ill that night. The name of the Tate's usual maid was Esmeralda. Although Gladys Kravitz was a relatively minor character on the show, the role is extremely memorable and kind of set the term Gladys Kravitz into the American vocabulary. And that's a phrase or a name that is commonly used as a synonym for a nosy neighbor or colleague. The show had an unusual amount of roles played by more than one person. There were two Darrens, there were two Gladys Kravitz, there were two Louise Tates, and there were two of Darren's fathers. Dick York left the show in 1969, and his role of Darren was taken over by Dick Sargent. When Alice Pierce died, her role as Miss Kravitz was taken over by Sandra Gould. Now, one of the odd things, if you really have a keen eye and look at the cars that show up during the first six seasons, you'll notice that every car in sight is a Chevrolet. And that was because the car company was one of the show's original sponsors. Elizabeth Montgomery played the role of Samantha Stevens and her more free-spirited cousin, Serena. In the cast listings of many of the episodes, The role of Serena was listed as being played by Pandora Spox. Many viewers didn't realize this and wrote Pandora fan mail. There's also a famous Hollywood legend that says that Montgomery and her husband, William Asher, once left the set together with Montgomery still wearing her Serena costume and makeup, and they checked into a hotel together instead of going home. Almost all of the female witches in the show have a name that ends with the letter A, including Samantha, Endora, Esmeralda, Clara, Hagatha, Enchantra, Serena, and Tabitha. Now that doesn't mean that all of them were done like that, because there's quite a few that don't end with A, but it's kind of odd that so many of them do end with A. Samantha was asked on three separate occasions in three separate episodes if she knows Dr. Hafner, the plastic surgeon, who does wonderful nose work. In real life, Elizabeth Montgomery did have her nose done, among other plastic surgery procedures that she received. And this nose work is evident between the pilot and later episodes in the series. In every color episode of the show, the color green, which has longly been associated with witches, was featured prominently in the episodes. Whether it was the wall-to-wall carpet, the paint on the bedroom walls, the kitchen, or props in Darren's study, such as an emerald vase, lamps, and his leather armchair, green was everywhere you looked. Samantha was decked out in green, more often than she wasn't. The prominence of this drab green color was common for TV shows that made the change to color in mid-run. And this is because this color of green shot much better in black and white film stock. You can notice this same effect on a lot of TV shows that switched from black and white to color, like The Andy Griffith Show. There's this continual drab green color that is used in all the settings. Before the lead character's name was Samantha, the name was actually going to be Cassandra. And the studio really wanted Tammy Grimes for the part. But she didn't get the show at all. And she thought that as a witch, she was going to be able to stop wars and solve traffic problems. She decided to turn the role down. Now, Dick York was injured in an accident when he was filming a Gary Cooper movie in 1959. That movie was called They Came to Cordora, and this accident basically ruined his career. He ended up tearing muscles in his back, and he had to take massive amounts of painkillers, deal with addiction that was related to that, and his inability to function on the set. After the third season, it was not often known whether Dick York would be well enough to work during a given week. Darren List's scripts were produced and kept on hand in case he was not able to perform. 
Now, this caused just a terrible production problem for the studio. They just didn't know how to continue on having him in the role of Darren. So they basically fired him. Now, they did it in a much softer way, saying that he was replaced because of health issues. But he was really kicked off the show because he couldn't show up to work. When it became clear that they were going to do away with Dick York's character, they really thought about canceling the show entirely because Elizabeth Montgomery was really wanting to move on anyway. But the ratings of the show were still high enough that the network wanted to keep the show going. So they brought in Dick Sargent to replace York. But there was still one problem with this. How to explain why Darren looked and sounded different. Many people working on the show came up with all sorts of ideas how to explain it. But Asher thought that the viewers were much smarter than this and that they understood that an actor was playing the role. So he decided that the best explanation was no explanation. Now, not everybody was really happy with Dick York's dismissal from the show. Agnes Moorhead was furious. She had a really strong working relationship with Dick York. And when he was replaced by Dick Sargent, she didn't take this decision well at all. On Sargent's first day on the set, during the script reading, in front of the entire cast, including Sargent, Moorhead very slowly but firmly stated, I don't like this change. Elizabeth Montgomery charmed all of us with her beauty and her magic. Who doesn't remember sitting there watching as she twitched her nose to make things disappear, reappear, or completely change? What a great show this is, and it's always a blast to watch this in reruns. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.